our third reaction type that you have to be able to be able to write for me on quizzes and exams are called double replacement reactions. And even within those, there are three uh, types or three subtypes within that. But they all follow the same pattern, so they're all called double replacement reactions. Uh, some other instructors call them double displacement reactions. Uh, either one works for me. Now, uh, the first subtype of this is going to be called a precipitation reaction. And one of the products is a precipitate, a solid. And so the first example we want to do is uh, to talk about what happens when a container of potassium iodide uh, is added to an Erlenmeyer flask of lead nitrate. And in fact, uh, we're going to be doing it uh, slightly differently. We're going to add lead nitrate in the video that I'm showing here. Um, the video that I'm showing here. There we go. And uh, as you can see, this is a potassium iodide solution. And to it, we're going to add a solution of lead to nitrate. It works the same either way, but this was the nice video that I found. You can see that lovely precipitate forming, uh, brilliantly colored. It does appear, depending upon how you add the two chemicals together, to precipitate or rain down to the bottom of the beaker in this case. And so how do we understand what's happening in terms of what's going on for our class? So a precipitate forms, that's our experimental evidence. That precipitate is yellow in this case. Now, and to analyze this process, uh, we're going to go through writing the overall reaction, the total ionic equation, or the TIE, and the net ionic equation, or the NIE. And so for this process, for potassium iodide um, mixed with lead to nitrate, we'll write out the two formulas. Potassium iodide plus lead to nitrate. And one of the things I'd like to emphasize as we do this is you're always writing good formulas. It turns out that nitrate is a minus one ion, lead two is a plus two, therefore we need two nitrates for the formula unit uh, of this ionic compound. Now the way that uh, these work is that the positive ion, which is the K plus, and the negative ion from the other reactant they are going to team up to form one of the products. In this case, uh, potassium nitrite, nitrate. The other product is going to take the other two ions, the positive or cation, lead 2 plus, and iodide. And when we write the formula, and I'm going to leave some space for the phase here or state, PBI2. And I'm leaving a little bit of space for coefficients there as well. Now, uh, the process is that uh, one of these two things does form the solid phase according to our solubility rules. Uh, our solubility rules, rule number one, says that all things containing potassium are soluble. Soluble things mean they do dissolve, and that's going to be aqueous because it dissolves. That means that the other one must be a solid um, one of our rules says that most uh, halide compounds are soluble except for when they contain silver uh, ion, mercury one ion, or lead two ion. So this is a case where we have a solid there. This is the overall reaction. It's not balanced yet. I can see that I have two nitrates here, but only one nitrate on the product side. I'm going to Without going through all my rules for balancing reactions, I'm going to just balance it uh, visually and then see if I can get it that way. I, I always have the fallback plan of going to my uh, rules. Let's see. Now I have two potassiums. I need two potassiums on the reactant side, and that gives me two iodides, and everything is balanced right there. Now, the total ionic equation, what is it? So it writes all ions as ions and all so, uh, solids, liquids, and gases as uh, molecules or 
formula units. So what we're going to do is we're going to, let's, let's have a working definition of a TIE. In a TIE, all strong electrolytes become ions. And I'll show you what that means. Uh, all other species stay together. Mm, I'm going to put that over here. Stay together, which just means you're not going to break them up into ions. And I'll show you what that means, and we'll talk about this through uh, the next several pages with the examples. Potassium iod, potassium iodide is aqueous, therefore, it, uh, and it is an ionic compound, therefore it is a strong electrolyte. Strong electrolytes break up 100% into ions. As we bring this down, this is going to be 2K+, plus, and I'm going to start all the way over here because this is a long one. 2K+, plus, plus 2I-, minus. those are both aqueous. In our head, as we write these two things, we realize that K plus and I minus, those are going to be aqueous ions. And each of those aqueous ions is going to have a hydration shell of water molecules around it. Uh, K plus is positive, so it's going to have the oxygen portion of the water molecules facing it. But what we want to make sure you know is that, that is, that's the picture in when uh, potassium iodide is dissolved in water. We don't have potassium iodide. We have potassium ions floating around in solution. We have iodide ions floating around in solution. And so the point of the total ionic equation is to be able to think a little more deeply about what is happening in the aqueous phase beyond the overall reaction. Lead to nitrate, an ionic compound that does dissolve. It is aqueous as well. And so we're going to write aqueous phases for those two ions. We have two nitrates, like so. And so this reactant side tells us that we have all ions floating around in solution. They're actually two separate solutions. We haven't mixed them together yet. When we do mix them together, some things don't change. The potassium and the nitrate are still aqueous ions floating around in solution. I knew it was going to be tight. We'll go to the second line. But the lead to iodide does become a solid. It is not aqueous anymore. And so what I mean is all strong electrolytes become ions. You can see that. All other species stay together. Those other species are going to be solids, liquids, gases, weak electrolytes, and, and I'm sort of out of space over here, but your notes will be much more organized, uh, non-electrolytes. So everything else is not broken into ions, and we'll see examples. Okay, so that's uh, a working definition of a TIE, an example. Now the NIE, the nationic equation. Uh, so a couple things we want to say about that. First, in the nationic equation, you cancel all spectator ions. And a spectator ion is any ion that is exactly the same on both sides. Any ion that is exactly the same on both sides. And that just means they're spectators. They watched what was going on. They did not participate in the reaction. I see 2K plus aqueous on the reactant side. I see 2K plus aqueous on the product side. Those two things are the same. They will get canceled out, and they will not get written in the net ionic equation. I have two nitrates, 
on the reactant side, I have two, or sorry, on the product side, I have two nitrates on the reactant side. Cancel those out. And then, so cancel all spectator ions, comma, definition of those, and write it what is left. And write what is left. We're left with two iodide ions plus uh, lead two ion goes to lead two iodide solid. Now, the net ion equation, the point of it is we show only the reacting species. And we can ask the net ion equation, what reaction happened, if any, and what kind of bonds were made? Because the definition of a true chemical reaction is that either bonds were made, bonds were broken, or both bonds were made and broken. And this, so it all shows only the reacting species, and we can show that as iodide and lead two came together, an ionic bond was formed. And this is a very nice example of a chemical reaction, a double replacement reaction.